go back to when the robotics research team was started, the idea was trying to get robots to pack shopping. And we've had some success for that already and we're putting a solution into production now which uses a suction cup and so we can kind of pick a whole class of objects which that kind of end effector can cope with. This kind of solution works well with certain class of objects but actually one day we want to be picking up all kinds of things including fruit and vegetables and these things are not the kind of thing you would typically pick up with a robot. We hooked up with a bunch of academics but we're interested in using these things called underactuated hands. What's characteristic of these hands is the, the fact that uh, when they grasp something they shape themselves to the object. So you don't need precise uh, predictions of the shape of the object. The hands adapt themselves to what it is they're picking up. And another part of the project is the fact that if you're using this kind of hands, hands which have inherent compliance to them, you can actually exploit environmental constraints to make your manipulation strategies more robust. So one of the characteristics of the underactuated hands is the fact that although they've got multiple degrees of freedom, they've only typically got one degree of control or one or two degrees of control. So for instance, the PISA IIT hand has tendons running through the thumb and all of the fingers. And what they do is they pull this one tendon and all the fingers close and that's how it shapes itself to an object. So as one finger makes contact, it can't close any further. So the other fingers take up the contraction of the tendon. We've actually done experiments with the hands on the things that we're interested in, uh, instances of fruit and vegetables, and uh, worked out under what conditions they work well with the fruit and vegetables and where they don't work quite so well. And we've actually fed this back to the guys that design the hands, and they've come back with iterations that are more suited to our use case. So one of the challenges we've faced on the SOMO project is characterising the operation of the hands. And this has led us to be doing loads of actual physical experiments with the hands in our use case. Now, it, a certain number of concerns out there are actually using simulators to try and predict the behaviour of systems. But the problem with simulators is it's very difficult to uh, model the dynamics of contact. And for the underactuated hands, we don't even know what contacts they're going to be making. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to try and simulate this which is a shame really because it would save us a lot of time. So we've actually had to resort to actually doing the real experiments in the real world in order to get some results that we can rely on. And now we've managed to characterise the hands, we can actually use this measure of their performance and present it to the planner and then the planner can choose the parameters for the hand in order to get the best operation out of them for a given circumstance.